All right, guys, so this is my drone up there. This is my radio. I'm just kidding, this is my radio. Look at that. Critical setting that most of people were missing, including myself. For Betaflight 4.4 GPS Rescue. On Failsafe tab, Channel Fallback Settings. Here you need to select Set and then select your approximate hover throttle. Also you need to have one of your aux channels to set angle mode for some of the values. And then you need to set this value for angle mode right here and click Save and Reboot. Why this is critical, what other things you could be missing and why GPS Rescue is a big deal. But first, let me call to my GPS expert. What's up, Lamone? Hey, Noik, why do we even need GPS? Yes, GPS is amazing because it can practice drone racing for you automatically. I don't have to do anything and my drone will practice for me. You must be out of mind because you talk to me from the drone. Never stop practicing. If you decide to repeat something from this video, you do it at your own risk. Pretty much like for any video on this channel. Betaflight 4.4 GPS Rescue has a dramatic improvement over the previous version. It also has some secrets. Before we go to all this drama, no. We need to set up GPS and I know a lot of people already know how to do that. So feel free to use this content menu. Solder your GPS to one of the open UART ports, you know TX go to RX, RX go to TX, then open ports tab, find that port here and put GPS right here. Auto should work here pretty good, but sometimes you need to switch these settings and see what works for your case. Boring part is almost done. Then open configuration tab, scroll a little bit down till you see GPS and activate it. Butterfly developers recommend you using GPS modules that do support uBlocks protocol, because that will give you at least 5 updates per second. If your GPS does not support uBlocks, then you can try NMIA. Sometimes it can still give you a decent update rate, but sometimes it's like one time per second only, which will make your quad behave pretty jerky. <laughs> In most of the cases, you don't need to touch these settings. But your goal is to have this GPS icon activated. It does not indicate that you have good number of satellites. It just shows that your GPS module talks to the flight controller. Please keep in mind that to power up your GPS on some flight controllers, you need to power up the whole drone with a battery. So remember about safety, props off and all the stuff. This use Galileo might improve your accuracy, might not. So I just leave it off. I got enough GPS satellites. Of course, double check that you have your accelerometer activated. Do not use magnetometer unless you know what you're doing because magnetometer is a bitch and you can try to use barometer if you have it then put your drone on the table as flat as possible and on setup page click calibrate accelerometer give it a few seconds and this picture should become flat as well now let's move to the mode stop and set one or multiple of your aux channels to set angle mode and gps rescue I like to have it on one switch, so like in the middle it's angle and then all the way down is GPS rescue, but it's all up to you. I know you're thinking, angle mode is for noobs, but first of all, you are a shit pilot. And second, you need angle mode for GPS rescue failsafe stage one. You need to check that your angle mode can actually fly and behaves good and can keep your drone flat in the air, because if it doesn't, then your GPS rescue will not work for sure. Nope, not gonna do it. By the way, check the 3D printed modification for Chimera 7. iFly told me that to fit the new DJI O3 unit and camera, I need to buy a whole new frame. Probably I should share this file on Thingiverse, but you know me, I'm too lazy. Let me give you guys an important disclaimer about GPS modes. I think there is a huge misconception that GPS modes can help beginners to save their do-it-yourself accurate drones. This is silly. But beginners should really fly with no people around, I think that's obvious. And the moment you realize something goes wrong, for example, like you start losing orientation or you go maybe a little bit too fast or a little bit too high, just disarm, immediately disarm. That should be like a habit that takes you like micro mini nanoseconds. And this is especially critical if you fly with your friends, so just practice quick disarming. Because imagine you're a beginner and you build your drone and something goes wrong and you decide to activate return to home or, I don't know, autopilot position hold 
panic button. And you're a beginner, you build this drone, who knows what happens next. While there are no people around, there could be people, I don't know, like half mile away. And missile and compass or, I don't know, poor GPS soldering or wrong settings can make your quad covering huge distances in a matter of like 30 seconds. So when there's nobody around, immediate disarming, it's not very safe for your drone, I mean, you can bend the prop. In some very rare cases, it can damage the battery and like set everything on fire, but I don't know, I keep fire extinguisher in the car. But fly away or like trying to recover it, making it worse, make things more dangerous. If you're an experienced pilot and doing like long range mountain dives, yep, that's a nice application for GPS rescue. Of course, practice in simulator and don't blame me or better flight if your drone crashes on, I don't know, someone's Lamborghini. Finally, let's move to the failsafe tab. And if you don't see it, make sure this expert mode toggle is activated. Scroll a little bit down and activate GPS rescue. Then on the left side for channel fallback settings, for throttle, activate set. And here, put some value that a little bit above your hover throttle. Then find your aux channel that activates your angle mode. Make it set and put the value that will activate angle mode. For me, it's 1500. It's pretty easy to check. You open modes tab, find angle mode, and you see 1500 will activate angle mode. Uh, like a face with a with a tongue. So what's happening? Imagine at some point of time you went too far and losing RC signal. For next 300 milliseconds your drone is acting like nothing happened. It keeps doing whatever it was doing before and waiting for potential signal recover. If signal doesn't recover, then it goes to stage 1. By default stage 1 is roll pitch yo in the middle and throttle all the way down to zero. So by default your quad will be falling down for 1.5 seconds still spinning the props. And this is alright for racing or freestyle but this is not good if you're waiting for GPS to kick in. And that's why we changed these fallback settings. So in our case, it will be in angle mode for 1.5 seconds, slowly going up. After stage 1, 1 1.5 seconds by default, stage 2 kicks in. And by default, for safety, stage 2 is just drop, just disarm. But we set it to GPS rescue, so there we go. Ooh, that's smart. Mm. Let's check some other GPS rescue settings. I don't want to go through all of them, but these are some you might be interested in changing. So this altitude mode, by default it's set to maximum altitude. So if you're flying your drone and then suddenly GPS rescue is activated, like here for example, then in maximum altitude mode it goes to maximum altitude during your flight, plus 10 meters, and then it tries to go back home. These 10 meters has been confusing people because they don't know about that. But if you need to, you can change it in CLI by setting set GPS rescue initial climb equal 10 or 5 meters or 20 meters, whatever you want. Then you can see all these like ascending speed, descending speed, maximum speed, this is all pretty clear. I think 5 meters per second for ground speed is a little bit too slow, so I set it to I think 8 or 10. Important setting here is throttle hover. Remember our little diagram. So this throttle hover is a throttle that will be applied right away after stage 1. If you have it way off, it can cause your drone to drop or jump. Now, Betaflight is smart enough to realize that this hover throttle is a little bit off and your drone is climbing too fast or dropping down. And then it will react accordingly and stabilize the situation. But that's like the initial Betaflight reaction when the GPS rescue stage 2 kicks in. Also this angle setting, 40 can be a little bit too conservative. This is like the maximum angle your drone will tilt in order to keep the desired speed. You can set here, I don't know, 60 for example. For strong wind situation, you might want to increase this throttle maximum. I think by default it's 1600, I set it to 1800. Important setting that I forgot to mention on configuration tab, set home point once. If you activate it, then the only way to reset the home position will be power cycle your drone. Because it will just remember your first arming position and use it all the time, until you power cycle of course. A CLI secret. HD OP. It's a shame that it's off by default, so you absolutely need to turn it on. This will give you an extra metric how accurate your GPS readings are besides the satellite's count. Oh yeah, I like that. So it will add an extra value on OSD after the satellite's count. This is horizontal dilution of precision. Based on Wikipedia, less than 1 is ideal, 1 to 2 is excellent, 2 to 5 is good, 5 to 10 is moderate. Even though probably here I, I wouldn't fly it, I would wait for ideal or excellent. On this wiki page, the link in the description, there is like a nice detailed explanation of what exactly is that. But the idea is pretty simple. Imagine there are two satellites, and each one of them reporting some distance with some error. They don't really report distance, but for simplicity. So we must be somewhere here on the intersection of these circles, it's like little nice square. Now imagine these two satellites are located like this and reporting these two distances. And now you can see that the intersection of these two rings is way bigger. So having the same amount of satellites, your GPS precision 
decision can be dramatically worse. And this HDOP value on OSD can tell you something about that. And while we're talking about OSD, I think it's very important to have your satellites count on OSD, of course. Also, distance to home and direction to home. This is not distance to my home, this is the distance to where you armed your drone. And altitude above your arming position. Keep in mind that before you arm it, this altitude shows the GPS altitude above the sea level. And after you arm it, it should go to zero and then grow as you fly higher. These values are pretty important to monitor to have an idea of how healthy your GPS situation is. Also, it could be a nice idea to include GPS latitude and longitude on OSD, because in case you lose your drone, your goggles DVR might help you find it. But before we move on to how you should check your GPS before full sending it, let me remind you guys that every Betaflight feature has a person behind it, or multiple people. Betaflight GPS Rescue has been around for a while, but in Betaflight 4.4 it was dramatically reworked and now it's way better than it was ever before. I mean like, look, it can even land it instead of crashing and land it pretty precisely. And here we gotta say a huge thank you to Mr. CTT Snooze, Chris Thompson, one of the main Betaflight developers. Please don't mix him with Chris Thomas. The one is Betaflight developer and the other is MultiGP founder, the guy who allows overcharging and causes all the drama out there. So Chris Thompson did the most of the work and I know it was like days and weeks of coding and digging into the old code, the effort was just insane. I know Karate Broad was helping him as well. Mr. CTT Snooze also wrote a very detailed document about about GPS rescue, about all the little settings, all the like PID tuning for it, everything, like sanity checks, like everything you can imagine right here in this document. So if you need to find something that you didn't find in this video, please refer to this document, the link in the description. So overall it was a huge team effort including all the beta testers. For example, I remember Wesley, the famous Wesley from Express LRS was helping to test this feature as well. So yeah, you know, there's like a beta flight Patreon and PayPal, feel free to chip in it because it helps for the development. Also, I saw some people saying that, oh, you finally stole the GPS code from iNav. No. While iNav is cool and, and other stuff, it does require you to have compass with GPS. And compass or magnetometer is a huge bitch to set it up. Maybe not that huge, but like this size. Anyways, magnetometer is like an extra sensor that you need to spend some time on and be extra careful with. So this algorithm of like figuring out where you should go by only knowing the coordinates without the direction is, is kind of smart and that's why I think it's a big deal. So how you should safely check if your GPS rescue works as expected before full sending your drone out there? Well, sort of safely. First of all, you need to make sure that your radio link is set up properly. So turn on your radio and plug in the drone with a beta flight. If your receiver in the drone requires the battery to be plugged in, then take the props off from the drone and plug in the battery. Then open setup page and make sure that there is no failsafe flag here. Then turn off your radio and wait for failsafe flag to show up pretty much immediately. Then power your radio back on and watch for RX failsafe flag to disappear. With these simple two steps we verify that the receiver will report to the flight controller when the signal is lost. And also we verify that your RC link is capable to reconnect after the signal was lost. If something is wrong here, don't proceed, you have to fix your RC link, not beta flight. So when you come to the field for the first time with GPS, open GPS tab and wait for satellites. After that, if you have internet, then this map should show your approximate location. And it should show it pretty good, you know, like within like 5 or 10 meters. Also here on failsafe tab, you probably better check this toggle, if it will allow you arming without GPS fix or no. I like when it allows me to arm without GPS fix. Then I see the warning on OSD when I arm it, and then I know it won't come home if something happens. The next step is put your goggles on and check your satellite's count and HDOP. 10 or more satellites is a healthy number. HDOP value should be 2 or less, 1 is even better. Don't forget to check that your altitude doesn't jump too much before you arm it. Then you can take off and check that your angle mode works and it doesn't like drift or tilt in a weird way. And of course you should be flying over soft grass with no people around, no property or like dogs or something that you can harm or damage around. And don't fly over yourself. 
That's smart. And don't fly too high because GPS rescue will go to that altitude plus 10 meters while returning to home. Fly a little bit further away from you, like 50 meters, maybe 100 meters, and watch this home distance and home direction and also altitude and just see if they make sense. If they don't make sense, especially the home error, then do not, do not activate GPS return to home. It won't come home. Sometimes it takes a few seconds for home direction to settle and you have to be at least 30 meters away from you. 30 meters away from you horizontally by default otherwise gps rescue is not going to work if everything goes good all the way up to this point then you're ready to activate gps rescue with a switch Always be ready to deactivate it or disarm if something goes wrong. And, you know, just watch how it comes home. It should come and pretty much land. Sometimes it doesn't disarm by itself, so just be careful. When everything goes smooth multiple times in a row, then you can play with a failsafe on the Switch instead of GPS Rescue. And you have to check your GPS Rescue scenario in the control environment by turning your radio off. If you're brave enough. <laughs> Because, you know, you don't want any surprises when you lose your signal for real. While your drone is coming home, you can turn on your radio and try to regain control by wiggling sticks. But all this time, your arm switch should be in armed position. Because if you set it to disarm and you got your control back, then your drone will... I know it could be a little bit tricky to turn your radio on while your sticks are not in the correct positions. Welcome to HTX. Switch warning. But you can skip this warning. When you set up GPS Rescue on failsafe, you have to remember that this drone has it set up. For example, you go for the regular freestyle session in the park and you accidentally crash. Yeah, you're a shit pilot. And some little wire can come off and your receiver gives up. Do you really want GPS Rescue in this regular freestyle scenario? Eh? I probably don't. And always remember that this is just GPS Rescue. This is not like automatic landing, at least not yet. It's just GPS rescue. By the way, you should like and subscribe. Now. Leave a comment and there is my personal Patreon link in the description. That is it for today. See you in the next video. If I'm not lazy. Yeah.